Now we know how to start a project from beginning to end and upload it to the FPGA. So let's dig deeper and start using it or doing something a little bit more useful. What we're really going to be doing now and throughout the semester is actually taking a look at these, which we call them black boxes or boxes. And frankly speaking, in Verilog, I'm just going to call them modules, okay? Because in Verilog, everything lives within a module, okay? For the rest of the course, all we're going to do is we will say, okay, I want an AND gate in here and an OR gate in here or something like this. I'll create some sort of a design and I just place it in there and I'm going to put some inputs and some outputs and I just connect them somehow and use Verilog to describe it and then I'll take it and implement it in the FPGA. And taking it and implementing it on the FPGA is just writing the code in Vivado and just clicking generate bitstream and then upload it to the FPGA. That's the implementation part. So we're going to be doing design and description. So let's get started. So I'm going to start by using this particular um, circuit. And uh, if you know your digital logic or you remember it, this is just uh, a circuit that does uh, multiplexer. It's a, actually a two to one multiplexer. So if you don't remember what a two to one multiplexer or a MUX does, I recommend that you pause this video, just review it. And I also recommend that you do the truth table for this one. For example, you can say, well, this is the S and the X1 and the X2 and what does the F look like? So go ahead and do that. Um, some of you might have seen this multiplexer represented this way. Okay, so in what does a multiplexer do? A multiplexer or a two-to-one multiplexer, uh, frankly speaking, all it does, it just takes one of the inputs, which is in here, I call them X1 and X2, and connect it to the output based on the value of S. So I'm either connected X1 to F or I have um, X2 connected to F, depending on the value of S, whether S is zero or one. So review this because multiplexers are really important and we're going to th use them throughout the semester and actually they, they're, you're going to find them in all sorts of designs. But anyway, for now, even if you did not know that this is a two to one multiplexer and you don't remember any of this, well, what we really want to do is the following. We want to take this particular circuit and place it on the FPGA. Frank speaking, we want to write some code to describe it. And the way we do it is we need something we call an HDL, a hardware description language. So the key word is here is description language. In this course, we use Verilog. Okay, um, there are others, as you might remember, as, such as System Verilog, which got merged with Verilog. But anyway, we're using Verilog 2005 and sometimes it's 2001. They're very similar, but I, I tend to use the 2005 version. Okay. And uh, we're, Verilog is a hardware description language. It describes language. It's not called a hardware programming language. So I want you to pay attention to the fact that this is not a hardware programming language. So we're not doing programming, even though in a few minutes you might, you're going to take a look at code and it will look like you're programming. You're not programming. You're actually describing the circuit. So let me reemphasize this because this is really important and a lot of students actually get confused about it. I have a circuit in front of me and I want to implement it on the FPGA. And the way I do it is I want to write some sort of a textual description of this language. Okay. So how do I write this? Well, Verilog, which is a harder description language and that keep that in mind. It's really important. Okay. So regardless of the way you do it, and there are many, many, many ways and many ways to actually write Verilog code to describe this particular circuit or any other circuit. Okay. There are many ways to do it. Any, thing you write, it will fall under one of two categories. It's either structural representation of the circuit or behavioral representation of the circuit. And these are generally called modeling styles. So there are two, two schools, let me say it that way. Some people do a lot of structural and a little bit of behavioral. Some do a lot of behavioral and a little bit of structural. I tend to use them interchangeably and actually use them both, whichever is easier at the time. Okay, so what's the difference between them? Well, structural representation, as the name implies, I will go to this circuit and I'll describe its structure. I'll say, hey, I want an AND gate and I want another AND gate and I want an OR gate in here and I want a NOT gate and I'm gonna just connect them. And that's basically, I'm describing the structure. What behavioral does, it's actually doing the following. Well, when is this F asserted? Well, it's asserted if X2 and S are one or if X1 is one and S is zero. Okay, so it's a behavioral. It's not like not necessarily that. And we're gonna, I'm gonna just go through different codes to describe it to you. But for now, I just want you to know that there are structural representation and behavioral representation. Okay, so let's move on and write some code. 